The setting is 1950s France. The country must rebuild itself from the ground up after the destruction of World War II. The political landscape is hostile, and the French colonies are in upheaval. People are desperate for explanation of the chaos around them. Enter Albert Camus. A literary titan, Camus made it his life's goal to use his writings to light the spark of revolt in France through philosophy and existentialism. He spoke of the absurdity of life, how rather than give it meaning, you as an individual must accept the absurd and live fully in it. This is Camus' existentialist absurdism, and that idea of the absurd is what led to the movement of the theater of the absurd. The theater of the absurd is a period characterized by French playwrights who were inspired by Camus' absurdism. They wrote and directed many plays that commented on the absurdity of living, echoing the ideas of not only Camus, but other French existentialists such as Jean-Paul Sartre. One of the most influential playwrights of this era was Samuel Beckett. Beckett wrote plays under a more specific type of absurdism, the tragic comedy. Tragic comedy is a comical look at the absurdity of life, that the meaninglessness of life is what makes it so comical. This idea of tragic comedy and absurdism is what leads us into what is arguably Beckett's most profound work, Endgame. Endgame tells the story of four characters. Ham, a blind crippled elder who lives out his days sitting in his armchair. Clove, Ham's reluctant servant who is unable to sit. Nag and Neil, Ham's parents who are permanently stuck in trash cans and have no legs. These four titular characters all live together in a small gray room with two windows, and it is implied that there is nothing but a wasteland outside. They are cursed by the repetition of life. Every day they do the same things over and over. They live miserable existences and feel trapped in the routine, particularly Clove. Clove and Ham have frequent dialogue with one another, but they speak to each other in an odd diction and often comment on their disdain for one another. Despite this, they both know that they are codependent to the point of death. Why don't you kill me? I don't know the combination of the latter. Nell and Nag are even more so dependent on Ham, and this dependency leads to Nell's death after she can no longer put up with the living condition and stops eating the food she is given. Eventually, Clove, despite knowing full well he and Ham will die, decides to leave, and in a final attempt to show his dominance over Clove, Ham continuously blows his whistle and yells at Clove, until he knows that it is finally the end, and covers his face with a towel. The themes of Endgame reflect those of Camus and absurdism. The characters live a painful life and want nothing more than to be finished. However, they can't be finished, and they can't escape the pain that is their lives. I lost patience. Use your head, can't you? Use your head. You're on Earth. There's no cure for that. The phrase finished reinforces the theme of repetition. The first line of the play is Clove saying, It's finished. Finally finished. Finished. It's finished. Nearly finished. It must be nearly finished. Throughout the play, characters do an action and immediately revert that action. Nothing they do matters, and their actions are absurd. That is why they choose not to act, such as Clove not sitting or Ham never standing up. The characters refuse to accept their absurd lives and only attempt to hide from it by submitting to the routine. Beckett is trying to show what happens to a person when they fail to understand what Camus was saying in the myth of Sisyphus. The endgame characters cannot accept the absurdity of their lives, and that is the true cause of their despair and pain. The tragic comedy of Endgame is how Beckett displays the misery of the existence of these characters. He uses laughter as a metaphorical way to represent the miserable things in life. In the beginning of the play, Clove laughs at the room they are in, at each of the characters, and at the outside world. This idea of laughter being representative of misery is directly explained by Nell when she says, Nothing is funnier than unhappiness. It's the most comical thing in the world. Nothing is funnier than unhappiness. I grant you that. Oh. Yes, yes, it's the most comical thing in the world. Isolation is also a heavy theme in Endgame. Beckett sees loneliness as a given in the existence of a human. He shows the isolation of each character by their limited contact with one another. 
For example, Nell and Nag being unable to kiss or move. Kiss me. We can't try. Oh, why this fuss, day after day? It is absurd for Beckett that in a world of so many people, he still feels so alone. Isolation, repetition, and absurdity are constants in our lives. They are the products of the human condition. But, as Camus and Beckett illustrated, there is a way out, and that is to accept it with open arms. Just like Clove, we can fully accept our fate of death and walk out into the absurd world. Since that's the way we're playing it, let's play it that way and speak no more about it. Speak no more. Old Staunter, you remain 